You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with the with the I, I guess the latest build of Far Beyond the World. So we're gonna pick off at the very start of Chapter Seven. Um, that's where the final build. That's where the last build ended. So let's go ahead and head right back into it, guys. Rannick is home. Let's see if we can entertain him, shall we? All right, I'm gonna save it right here and overwrite that. Okay. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's jump right back. Okay. Closes the door behind him, gives me a tentative smile. His glossy eyes are matching mine, but before either of us breaks down in tears, he's already on me. I could feel his longing, evident in his tight embrace. He's holding me as if afraid that I that he should let go. I would appear in a puff of smoke. Not that I mind. This is what I wanted all those days. To be held firm and secure in his arms. And no one makes me feel as safe as he does. I'm so glad to see you're fine. I worried every day. About me? You were the one out there. Out there, in my, I'm in my element. But you, here. He cuts off, not wanting to vocalize any of his fears. I can sense through his tightening grip that he's been tormented by some straying thoughts. I'm fine. I mutter, trying to reassure him, while he takes idle sniffs of my skin and hair. Your scent has changed, he says in a slightly worried tone. Oh, um, it's just the soap Verissa gave me. I try to laugh it off as he presses me deeper into his chest, allowing me in turn to finally take in his smell. And I'm back at the meadow again, among the whispering woods, surrounded by the scent of the forest. I could stay like this forever. You smelled fine to me before, but if you prefer this... I don't mind either way. I try not to blush at the veiled compliment. It does make me it does make sense that as a wolf, he'd rather have me smell of myself than flowers. I could ask her for an unscented one if it bothers you, I propose quietly. I just don't want to go back to scrubbing myself with ash. Whatever works for you, I'm just glad you're alright. He whispers, his hold still in full force. I begin to worry that it's not really my about my scent. Something feels wrong. Are you alright? That's the question. Finally the wolf chuckles and pulls away, trying to rub away his tears discreetly masked by the awkward scratching of his muzzle. What's this, then? He deflects, looking at the skillet and dons a wide smile. A little welcome home gift. I know we're going to the feast, but I wanted to make something special just for you. How did you... I asked Verissa about your favorite meal, and she gave me instructions, but I've made it all myself. I state with a twinge of pride. The wolf stands there, looking at me with complete disbelief, his lips twitching slightly as until he musters a wavering smile. You truly are a moon send. He sighs as he sighs, his watery eyes trembling in the light of the dancing flames. He hugs me once again, all the gratitude I could ever wish for conveyed in his warm embrace. I sink into his form and savor the moment while he tries to compose himself, his muzzle hidden from my view. Hmm. But once he lets go, he's back to his old stoic self. He takes off his sword and pauldron, draping the green cape over one of the chairs. I want to help him with his gear, but he refuses, so I take this opportunity to set up the table and serve him the food. The wolf takes his seat, immediately throwing a confused gaze at me as I heap everything onto his plate. Are you not going to eat? No, this is all just for you. I shake my head with a gentle smile. Well, we can't have that. He mutters in feigned displeasure while cutting energetically into the pork. I was never any good while eating while Trist just watched. Rennick impales onto a fork a succulent piece along with an apple slice and nods towards me. Come, have a taste of your hard work. I sigh in amusement and approach, reaching out towards his open paw only to be pulled into his lap as while he laugh while he laughs merrily. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> I blush, feeling as my form sinks into his warm and slightly sweaty body. It's clear as he's clear he was rushing to get home as fast as he could. Each of his bulging muscles sends a shiver down my spine, and he knows it. But the complete KO comes when he brings a loaded fork to my lips. I part them shyly and accept the food, hearing as his tail thumps intensify. Being fed like that, in his arms? My heart speeds up, and I don't want this moment to end. Mmm, good, right? He murmurs as I chew slowly. The meal is indeed delicious, but I can't focus on it, as I feel something expand beneath my buttocks. Uh, yes Should I set a portion aside, then? The wolf smirks toothly, and I don't know how much more of it I can take. N no I jump off of Rannick's surprise, almost as if burned, but before he takes it the wrong way, I simply give him a taunting smile and ruffle his fur. As I said, those are all for you. I will have my fill at the feast. Very well, then. He chuckles and slaps my butt playfully. Skedaddle. Oh! I yelp instinctively, instinctively running back to my seat like a flustered waitress, much to his delight. 
When I'm seated again, I glance at the barrel with an awkward expression. I would have served with some ale, but I don't know how to open the damn thing. Hmm. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. <laughs> Wolf speaks between the bites, getting up to his feet. I watch as he approaches the cupboard and retrieves a wooden hammer and a wedge, swallowing with a satisfied sigh. I see there's at least a gallon of moonshine here as well. You're settling into our little charade. It was the least I could do. It is more than I would ever ask of you. He replies, walking up to the barrel and placing the wedge at the rim of the lid. Good thing you don't have to ask. With one swift stroke of the hammer, he frees the cap which rotates on its axis, splashing some ale around and causing us both to laugh. Damn! I'm still easily amazed by this rustic way of life. I want to rush in and grab the tankards from the shelf, but Rannick takes hold of my waist and hoists me up like a rag doll. What the? The room whirls and he pl as he the room whirls and he plops me down in a chair. You've done enough, pup. At least at least let me serve us a drink. He snickers as he, and I roll my eyes in amusement, resting my elbow on the table to prop my chin up. I watch as his tail wags happier and happier with each tankard filled. He brings them over and grabs my share, taking a quick sip followed by a rather thirsty gulp. Hmm. I kind of lie. I missed this. The brew starts to the brew starts to grow on you. That and the meals together in general. The wolf tail. The wolf tail swishes again as he sits himself comfortably with a dreamy twinkle in his eyes. I can't believe you went through all this trouble. It was no trouble at all. In fact, I had more trouble staying alive without you. Rennick laughs and again looks at me with the longing of the longing of a thousand years. That I can believe. He finally shifts his focus to the meal, and I'm glad for it as his penetrating stare does something to me. I feel butterflies, and my heart tremors each time our gazes meet. I bet he can sense that, but thankfully he doesn't dwell on it and takes another big bite. Mmm, it's delicious! I bet, I, I bet I've messed something up. I mumble awkwardly, taking an idle sip while he shakes his head. It's perfect! And even if you did, it would still be the best meal I had in ages. Oh, and why's that? I asked cheekily. To which he only responds with that disarming smirk. Because you've made it. Again, the shining emeralds pierce right through me and I'm becoming increasingly flushed. He knows it too. His tail's happy tapping betrays it. And he continues to drill his gaze into me, raising slightly one of his brows. As much as I enjoy his advances, we still haven't had a chance to talk about, well, us. So I get slightly anxious. I rub my arms and unwittingly draw his attention to them. His loving gaze suddenly shifts when he notices the bruises, and just like that, all the humor is sucked out of him. Did Vool do that? I'm not sure if it's just a blind guess or if he's suspecting something, but I decide to cut, in, cut this in its crib with a nervous chuckle. Before you jump to any conclusions, those are from a friendly spar, nothing else. A spar? He sounds unconvinced, and I wave my hand at him teasingly. Now you sound like Varissa. It was a spar. I wanted Vool to show me a few things, just for fun. And he did? Again... Doubt is clearly visible on his muzzle. Why wouldn't he? Because Vool's idea of fun is getting a boar or knocking someone's teeth out. I really can't see him sparring with you for fun. Oh, we did the boar gutting all right. Don't worry about that. Thankfully, no one's teeth needed to be knocked out. Really like the updated UI. It's gorgeous. I laugh, masking my anxiety behind another sip, and it seems that I threw him off. So, you worked at the butchery? Mm-hmm. And you're okay. Of course, it was quite fun. He showed me how sausages are made. Hmm. Who would have thought? I guess I worried over nothing. A subtle smile reappears on his muzzle, and I sigh in internally in relief. Honestly, Rannick, he was really good to me. I wouldn't wish for a different guardian. Is that so? He raises his brow in a teasing fashion, and I chuckle, realizing how it came across. Was I not meeting your standards, my lord? Oh, shut it, you hypocrite. I scoff playfully, rolling my eyes and his smile widens. I'm a hypocrite now. Well, what a fine welcome this turns out to be. I was at the villa. I saw where you grew up, you pr you princeling in disguise. It, take your lottie dahs and shove them up your tail. I stick my tongue out, and although at first he laughs, his expression slowly turns. Y you were at the villa? Yeah. Damn, it was a bit too casual a way to mention it. Now he'll be worrying about another thing. And... And I'm still alive, aren't I? I try to bring back some some sense of levity, but it doesn't work. What were you doing there? I was summoned to help with a luncheon for the elders. I respond truthfully. At this point, there's no sense in beating around the bush. You met Aldris? Although I find it funny he singled her out. It's, clearly, it's clear he's not sharing in my amusement. 
His tone betrays deep concern, and again I try to brush it off. I've met her in her pipe-smoking shadow. Did they mistreat you? Those two have a reputation, that's for sure, but I really don't want to waste our time on them. They didn't do anything that would be out of their character. They're just too massive. Yeah, I can't say that on YouTube. <laughs> he snorts, surprised by my boldness. That they are, but they're also dangerous. I've learned that the hard I've learned that the hard way, but it's nothing I can't handle. I wink, cocking my finger and man and finally managing to draw a reluctant smile from him. When you said your father and the elders didn't get along, you weren't fucking kidding. I know, right? Talk about an understatement of the century. Renick laughs merrily and eases up, simply, da simply digging back into his meal. He must have been starving, or in, an un or in an unlikely event I managed to cook it properly, he simply enjoys the meal because he devours it in a, good, in a few quick chomps. I allow him to focus on the food for a bit, especially since his tail taps the chair again in a lively rhythm. Seeing he finally lightened up, I decide to switch the topic to something more casual. Did you get this furniture from the villa when you moved out? What? No! He protests in an oddly stern fashion, swallowing heavily a mouthful. It looks pretty similar. I've made all this myself. Wait, you did? I blink in astonishment, casting my gaze around the rooms. Yeah, why so surprised? I've crafted all the furniture with my very own paws. Rannick mutters, taking a long sip to wash the food down. Sure, father helped me out a bit, but I, and I used the villa furniture as models. But this hall here is all new. He shrugs, petting the tablecloth with, tablecloth with pride. Damn, is there anything he cannot do? I just... And just as if reading my mind, the wolf continues. The only things I had to buy were the things I couldn't make myself. Like the candelabra, hinges, nails, and other, and other metal items. I'm out of smith, you know. Apparently there are still a far- they are- apparently there are. Still a far cry from my own ineptitude. But everything I bought was paid for with my hard work. Oh, okay, okay, I believe you. I laugh, raising my hands in surrender. You really do make, make a show of how self-made you are. Well, I have to. He shrugs again, cutting into one of the last remaining pieces of meat. I don't want other wolves to think I'm a spoiled brat resting on his father's laurels. Literally. I tease, mimicking the chief's wreathe in my, with my hands. But trust me, you're far from it. Everyone can see how independent you are. He smiles, hungrily swallowing the last bit of pork and lifting the plate up. To my surprise, he starts licking it in a long, slow lapse of his tongue, releasing satisfied groans in between. I blush, both at the compliment of a plate leaf clean, but also at the sight of his tongue in action and his rather provocative moans. This time around, I'm the one getting aroused at the table. I try to look away, allowing him to finish in peace. Once he's done, he puts the plate down and gives me a, gives me a tender smile. Thank you. This was unexpected. And much needed. Rannick adds softly, placing his paw on top of my hand, and I interlay it with my other one. You're welcome. He blushes slightly at that gesture and retreats his paw, clearing his throat nervously. He grabs his tankard as an excuse and nods towards me. I take hold of my mug and we clank them merrily, taking a deep gulp. The wolf reclines and looks toward the darkening sky outside. Despite being in an obviously good mood, he frowns again. I'm sorry you had to endure Aldris and Dran on your own. I wish I were there to protect you. I think it's a good thing I was on my own. You and me in one room with those abusive assholes? We'd be discovered in a blink of an eye. I snort and he smirks, looking at me coyly. Heh, huh, I guess. You've changed quite a bit over the course of a week. You're more confident. I like it. He nods with satisfaction and takes a sip of ale. I guess this new reality is finally sinking in. Plus, I had to rely on myself a little bit more. I specifically asked Vool to take care of you. The wolf mutters, betraying a hint of disappointment, which I won't allow to linger. And he did, but he also made me more self-reliant without any coddling. Coddling? He nearly spits his brew as he chokes on my remark. Now you definitely sound like Vool. He's not wrong, though. I appreciate everything you do for me, I really do. I appreciate the cuddles and an, even an occasional coddle. I chuckle, causing his muzzle to brighten. But it does feel good to be able to stand on my own every once in a while. At first, his green eyes lock on me with surprise, but then a spark of pride glimmers inside of them as he gives me an approving smile. Heh! <laughs> That's the small, trembling boy in return to find a confident young man. Seems the time apart did us both some good. I'll drink to that. I feign a toast, and we clink the tankards once again. Hey, speaking of time apart... I mutter reluctantly as he takes a sip. Did... did you arrive at any conclusion? Regarding us? My skin gets hotter and hotter as I realize how awkward it sounds. I did. The Grey Wolf just states plainly. But I think it's a conversation that requires a time and place, neither of which is suitable right now. 
Uh oh. He's going to deflect again, isn't he? We have a feast to attend to, and he pauses, his somewhat unsettled gaze darting into the distance. There will be a few urgent matters to discuss. Once all that is done, we'll have a long, honest conversation which you deserve. You promise? I don't try to ha I don't try to hide a twinge of doubt within my voice. I swear it on my moonstone. He tugs at the glimmering pendant, emptying his mug in one go and standing up. Come, time to go. The sooner we deal with this, the sooner we can have that that one on that one to one. I nod, smiling, and get up to my feet. As I empty my own tanker, Rennick's gaze darts to my waistline for a moment, and the wolf looks back to me with quite a confused expression. Is that Cora's purse? Excuse me. Oh, yeah. I mutter awkwardly, patting the pouch. She re-gifted it to me. I hope you don't mind. No, I just. I didn't know she didn't like it. The wolf voice. The wolf's voice wavers a little, and his ears slump slightly. He's clearly a bit saddened by this. I'm sure she loved it. I try to comfort him. She just didn't have a use for it. As it happens, I nearly lost one of Vool's tokens, so it was a, so it was a solution to my lack of pockets. I really needed something to carry things in. I laugh awkwardly, and it seems I managed to distract him. However, he quickly shakes his head in bewilderment. Wait, one of Vool's what? Here, I'll show you. I take out I take out the black wolf's coin from the purse and walk towards the cupboard to retrieve the other one. Hexley got one of yours, too. I pass both tokens to him, and Rannick expects them in disbelief. How did you... It's been a long week. Apparently so. He exhales in amazement, causing me to smile with pride. I want you to have them. What? No! The wolf protests, shaking his head. I could not accept them. Why not? If you've earned them, then, you're, then they're yours. Both of them. He states plainly, and I just scoff in amusement. True, but I can gift them to you. And I can refuse to accept, can I? The wolf smirks playfully, and I'm getting slightly confused. He notices that and sighs, placing a paw on my shoulder and looking deep and deep into my eyes with a pride, proud smile on his muzzle. I appreciate the gesture. I do. You have no idea how happy it makes me to see you flourish like this. You almost sound surprised. I tease, and he nods in equal jest. In a good sense, I am. It's good to see you stand on your own feet, and that is why I don't want to take away the fruits of your labor. Hold on to them. They may yet come in handy. I guess I can see his point of view, so I smile at him with gratitude and deposit the coins into my new purse. As I close it, I run my finger along the Celtic knot motif and look to the wolf. At the villa, I saw the same pattern on the banners inside the main hall. Is that your people's crest? Yes. Why do you ask? The wolf responds, fastening his pauldron and cloak. I just... it's just... Uh, it caught my attention is all. Is there any significance behind it? It's a symbol of Tyrannin. It represents the infinite crossroads. He states his... okay. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. I gotta eat and get ready for work and make some video stuff before I head off. Ah oh, man, I got a lot to do in less than 40 minutes. Okay, alright. Alright guys, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Give a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!